Christine Lee Healy, and I'm a board-certified rheumatologist. I have treated patients with arthritis and autoimmune disease for over a decade, and some of the most common questions I get on a daily basis are, what foods should I eat to help my condition? What kind of diet is recommended to help with my joint pain? While there are no major clinical trials that have addressed this, I have begun to research these questions which are so important to my patients. Based on the medical literature we have available, I really believe in the power of food choices. And not only have I developed recommendations, but I've also incorporated these into delicious recipes to share with you. Last time we talked about the health benefits of eating foods high in omega-3. Today I want to show you the significance of the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio on inflammation. Omega-6 has a very similar structure to omega-3, but is different by the loss of one carbon double bond. Both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are essential for normal body function, but they have a yin-yang relationship when it comes to inflammation. Icosapentaenoic acid, or omega-3, breaks down into products which decrease inflammation, while arachidonic acid, or omega-6, breaks down into products which can increase inflammation. In an ideal world, people need to eat omega-6 and omega-3 in a one-to-one -one ratio in order to have balance on this. But a typical American's diet has a ratio of 15 to 1, sometimes up to 30 to 1, in certain parts of this country. This is due to eating high omega-6 foods, for example, processed foods like chips, fast food, fried foods like burgers and fries, chicken nuggets, refined sugars such as pastries, candy, cake, and cookies. All of these foods have high vegetable and corn oil content, which has very high omega-6. You can decrease this by using canola oil when you cook, which has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 2 to 1. Olive oil has a ratio of 12 to 1, so you can use this occasionally. Omega-6 is also high in meats. Whether it be chicken, turkey, or beef, meats coming from animals that are grain-fed have much higher omega-6 content than animals that are grass or pasture-fed. If you increase your dietary intake of omega-3 relative to omega-6, then you reduce your ratio, and this decreases the potential for inflammation. So let's get cooking. Today I'm making another salmon recipe, mainly because salmon is such a great source of omega-3, but also because it has great flavor and is so readily available. I'm making salmon cakes with mashed chia cauliflower side. Remember, if available to you, you want to buy wild salmon, which has higher omega-3 content than farmed salmon. This recipe is great for using leftover salmon, which may not be enough for a whole meal. I have some ingredients to make my leftover salmon delicious again. I have half a cup of small diced onion and one stalk of small diced celery, which I've already sautéed for five minutes in a tablespoon of canola oil. I have one tablespoon of chopped capers, which adds brininess, two tablespoons of chopped fresh dill, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning. I have half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. You could substitute with gluten-free options like crushed cornflakes or rice crackers. And then we have our two binding agents, which are two eggs and a half cup of plain Greek yogurt. Now normally people use mayonnaise as a binder, which has very high omega-6 content, so I'm substituting with Greek yogurt, which doesn't have any. Okay, I'm going to stir this until just combined. Okay, I roughly want to flake up my cooked salmon. I want to kind of leave it in some chunks here so it's not too mushy. I'm going to gently combine the ingredients so the fish doesn't get broken up. Okay, I'm ready to cook these into cakes, but first I'm going to get the cauliflower ready.
My cauliflower chia mash has two star ingredients, which both pack a lot of omega-3. Chia seeds are all the rage right now. They're a tiny grain that is indigenous to the Americas. They don't have much taste, but they can add incredible texture in different foods. Their nutritional value is amazing. Not only do they have tons of antioxidants and vitamins, but they also have a lot of fiber, and of course, lots of omega-3. For my mash, I'm going to steam two cups of cauliflower florets in half a cup of water with a sprinkle of salt. This will take about eight to 10 minutes. I'm heating up two tablespoons of canola oil at medium low heat. You take a handful of the mixture and form a patty about one inch thick. Lay this carefully in the heated oil. You want to cook each side for about four minutes until golden brown. And then you want to place it on a paper towel to drain the excess oil. Meanwhile, my cauliflower has steamed for 10 minutes and is now fork tender. I drained the water, and a little trick I do is that after I drain, I put the cauliflower back into the hot pot and cover it, leave it on the stove for another 10 minutes. That way it won't be soggy or waterlogged. I've put the steamed cauliflower into my food processor. If you don't have one, just use a masher. It'll be lumpy, but some people like that. I'm adding a few pinches of salt, some ground pepper, a tablespoon of plain Greek yogurt, and I'm going to process this until I like the consistency. Now I'm going to add my two tablespoons of chia seeds. Again. Perfect. I'm ready to plate this up. You can eat the salmon cakes by themselves, but I prefer to eat them like burgers in between two pieces of red leaf lettuce, which also has omega-3. I have some chia cauliflower mash on the side. It's a great compliment to these tasty salmon cakes. This is another delicious omega-3 meal that has a low omega-6 to omega-3 ratio that won't leave you feeling heavy and in pain. I'm Dr. Christine Lee Healy, and these are cooking points for healthy joints.